League from Wakefield. Oh. Lee Trinos is defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, oh. Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Ta-da! Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And Vincent is a poor lad. Six games, 61,000 fans, two matches that went to the golden point. It was definitely a magic weekend. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Eddie Hemmings. Eddie, thanks for coming in. Always a pleasure, Mark. You know that. And we've got a very special guest. The first time they've been on TV together since 2016. <laughs> it's Steve-O. Steve-O, how are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. I've, I've noticed Eddie has dyed his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. Five years, that's the same line of five years ago, for goodness sake. Oh, uh, well, they're, they're the good ones. <laughs> well, I'm hoping not to say much in the next half hour. I'm going to leave it to you two quite a lot. But let's just start with you, Steve. -O. That was a tonic rugby league needed, wasn't it, Magic Weekend? It certainly was. It's, um, I mean, to have two games in the same day that goes to the golden point is uh, is something that we've always sort of tried to get, especially to cross to the viewers, is that rugby league, in my opinion, is the greatest game of all. But uh, we've got to work hard to make sure that we can replicate what we did on the Magic Weekend. Maybe we've got to have more Magic Weekends. Maybe we do it twice in the season, start of the year and then finish off at the end of the year. Either way, We've got to come up with something. Yeah, he's always coming up with uh, little innovative ideas. Uh, I mean, he mentioned uh, the other week on our podcast that uh, thankfully for the viewers isn't like this. We don't see him uh, quite as broad as, as he is today. But um, yeah, he came up with this idea that, you know, the 100 in cricket has, has revolutionised the sport, uh, that rugby league needs to search for a shortened version of the game. And lo and behold... On the way into the studio this morning, I've heard that Rugby Union are thinking of a 12s competition and revolutionising the game with a short form of Rugby Union, a world event based in England next year. Talks very much at the initial stages, but Steve-O, they're talking about £250 million being injected into Rugby Union. You think the franchise money from somewhere needs to be brought into Rugby League basically to save the game, don't you? Yeah, we should have done that uh, several years ago. Um, one of the, the biggest disappointments that I've overcome is that the way that the Rugby Football League allowed Super League to break away. Now, if you have two governing bodies, it, it, to me, it will not work. You just can't say we want finance for one and yet we've got our finance for the other. We've tried all sorts of things. We've always tried to bring back in the big companies but unfortunately, we don't seem to attract them. You've just mentioned Rugby Union, 250 million. Imagine what we could do with a tenth of that. Well, that's, that is that is that is the case. I mean, the thing is, the Magic Weekend, Mark, will, will help. You know, he's right. Maybe we should have one in the start of the season. I remember we started the season once upon a time with a Magic Weekend in Cardiff underneath the roof. It was a fantastic way to kick the season off. And why could we not have Magic Weekend 2 at the end? Because we've actually got a bit of jeopardy now in Super League this year. OK, we know the Catalan Dragons are league leaders. We know the Saints are second and Warrington probably third. Will Wigan, Leeds, Castleford, Hull KR, who's going to make it? Wouldn't it be fantastic to have a Magic Weekend in a fortnight's time, Magic Weekend 2, when all that will become clear over the space of one weekend with all the matches played on TV? It, it, I mean... It gets criticised from time to time. You know, over the last 30 years, I've lost count of the number of people who've had a go at him. But he does come no, up but, with look, a couple of good I, ideas. There's nothing wrong with discussing where you think the game should go. Not at there? all. But, like, we're, we're sat here on a positive, though. Let's be honest, you know, COVID. I was lucky enough to go on a Saturday. Obviously, witnessed two great matches. Castleford, Salford weren't bad either. The atmosphere was superb. You know, it was 30 or... 30 odd thousand, 61,000 in total. You were on here three weeks ago. What are you saying to rugby league fans to come out? Absolutely. 
you know, and there is did. still some trepidation amongst some and you can't blame them. Well, there is. That's the problem. I mean, we're coming out of this COVID pandemic and, and, and perhaps people have found different things to do rather than, than watch sport, full stop. I mean, Premier League football is head and shoulders above everything else that takes place in this country. And, the, you know, they even had 60,000 a full house at the Etihad in Manchester on Saturday for the charity game, you know. Um, so people will come out. The Rugby League and Super League, as Steve O'Reilly says, has got to say this is a great reason to come out on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever the games are played. And gradually people are coming back to the sport, which is, which is great to see. And those two games on Saturday were fantastic. I mean, yeah. Catalan Dragons, four years ago, Mark, they were 40 minutes away from relegation. Now they're 80 minutes away from the grand final at Old Trafford. What a job McNamara, Steve McNamara, has done in the south of France. And he'll be delighted because this means once all the COVID restrictions are lifted, Oh, the French wine will be flowing in the Stevenson household. <laughs> uh, Steve, a word on Steve McNamara and the job he's done. Yeah, I think it's uh, it, he's done a marvellous job down there. Uh, when you think about the fact that they've they've now secured two trophies, mm. and I've always said that we should spread the game a lot more than what we have done. There's far too much self-interest in regards to the M62. I was up in Workington the other the other week, and Workington and Whitehaven, and uh, they asked me to say a few words before the the London uh, Whitehaven game, and I just said to them, you know, you should have got together. They hate that. It's only seven miles that separate them. You look at the amount of wonderful players that have come from Cumbria. They would be able to compete with anybody, not just in this country, but in the world. They've got to get forget about it. The rugby league has to start saying, we can't just be a northern game. And we should help people like London and Sheffield and people that in the south of France. I'm hoping that Toulouse, they, they get promoted because it will give a huge boost down south of France. All the schools, all the people, they want to go and see it. Rugby union has taken over. They're trying to just blot us out of the system and we've got to make sure that we get the schools sorted out the amateur game sorted out we've got to give them but first of all we've got to get the money and that's the problem we don't seem to attract people and the companies that have got the big money and thank goodness we've got bed fred well, well indeed, I say you've right. got, I'd like to think you've got a pretty good headline sponsor. Absolutely. You say, <laughs> I'm a bit we, biased, we, obviously. We, well, yes, of course, yeah. but I mean, we, we, yeah. we certainly have. You, 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 you sponsor everything that is good about rugby league. You sponsor the wheelchair, you the ladies. We've just extended the, our the Challenge lot. Cup The Challenge Cup has well, just been yeah. extended, yeah. absolutely. And I must say that 10 minutes from the end of the Saints-Catalan game on Saturday, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, if this is going to be the grand final, how are we going to sell this out? Because Saints were walking away with it then. Boom! The biggest comeback I have ever seen in Super League. Three tries. 30-12 it was. 30-12 yeah. down. Three tries in five minutes against previously St Helens defence dominated. And wow, off we went into Golden Point. And I know somebody in the south of England was cheering when Maloney's one-pointer dropped over the top of that crossbar. Am I right? You're spot on, Eddie. Uh, look... People used to say to me, for goodness sake, stop talking about the one point. But you've only got to win by one point. It doesn't matter whether you have 10 points, 20 points, 30 points. You've got to just make sure you win. And I think that what Catalan did to the Saints has given St. Helens the biggest kick up the backside yeah. Yeah. and they won't do it again. Because when they were leading, they still tried to play open football. But why do you want to do that when you've got the game in the bag? They try to keep the ball alive. They keep coming up with mistakes. And once they got the first try, they conceded that. Maybe some of the players said, well, that's just a consolation because we, we've, we're well in front. We're in control of the game. But when they scored the second try, I know what I'd have been doing. I'd have been putting a handbag throwing competition. <laughs> you, didn't have, you don't have to hit someone made them run the risk of being sent off, but you can grab someone and before you know it, there's 20-odd players all getting this, that and the other 
there's a few seconds it's going. And not only that, it could have put off Catalan's urge to go and keep going for it. It could also have yeah. seen one or two Catalan players in the sin bin. Well, <laughs> for one of the most best defences we've seen all season, Absolutely. that was very, very inexperienced. And they call it game management, don't they? The game management was awful by St Helens at the end. So let's just remind ourselves what many people are calling one of the greatest ever games at Magic. Wormsley and Matty Lees, McElorum on by Drinkwater and Tompkins a little step, another step from Tompkins and Tompkins, magnificent! Roby's pass, Wellsby's pass, Coote and Makinson! The metres in a match. Well, here's Percival and Percival for Coote and Coote will get a try for the Saints. We start who to signals and here is Metautia, here is Metautia, there is the Saints try. Lewis Dodd. Oh, Wellsby's pass gets Metauchia away. Metauchia looking for a second and gets it. Dean Fare, Maloney's short ball finds Cassiano. Cassiano, lovely offload. Drinkwater gets the pass away. Busque, Julian Busque, all the way. Wingfield plays the ball. Driven in towards those posts by Knowles. And Knowles is still on his oh. feet and spinning. And Knowles has got the try. Here is Drinkwater, Gil Dudson. It's going to be, it's going to be a really interesting last couple of weeks. Gudemont gets the pass away, and Fare this time will get the try for the Catalan Dragons. Morg does well. Morg does so well. Archer Morg does really well, and then just tap tackle gives it to Dudson, and Gil Dudson it is. Try is awarded in the final seconds of the game. Are they going to go for it? Maloney will. Maloney will. Maloney will. Win it. On the league leader's shield, he probably couldn't have done it in a more dramatic way. Well, have we won it? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. I don't know that, but thank you. <laughs> uh, I mean, it looked like the game was dead and buried at one point, but you've come back and somehow taken it to Golden Point and then got the win. Yeah, it oh, just shows. Um, how big, you know, how good this group of boys are. You know, we didn't, we didn't die and just continue to fight. And that's what I'm proud of, the boys for fighting, just fighting. And there was some drop goal at the end from Jimmy as well. Oh, I thought it, I thought it missed. I thought we were going to get ready for another seven tackle set there, but it went over, so thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> and they're, they're such a big physical pack. You boys in the middle have to really work hard today. Yeah, they made us work very hard today. The body's going to be a bit sore tomorrow or the next couple of days, so it'll be good to get a couple of days rest now. And you go into the playoffs in great confidence and great form in a few weeks' time. How far can this team go? Well, it's up to us, I guess. You know, we we'll just keep working hard for each other. I guess well, uh, we, can't, we can go all the way, I reckon. Cassiano, I didn't realise they'd won the league leaders' shield. So congratulations to the Catalan Dragons. We mentioned it earlier, a Challenge Cup uh, three years ago. And now the league leaders' shield. It's just awesome job by Steve McNamara. Right, uh, Lewis asked a question, Steve. Oh, how far can they go? Well, they've got a home semi-final. I think they can get to the grand final, can't they? Yes, they can. It's, uh, it, it's going to be difficult for them because um, they've got to make sure that they just calm down. They can't just say, well, that's the end of our season. We've got one trophy. You know, and McNamara is a good, good enough coach to make sure that they've got to realise that they, they, they've just got to get their defence sorted out early in the game. So, so many missed tackles in that allowed St. Helens to take control. But as I said before, this is the best kick up the backside that Saints could have had. Mm. It's better to lose something like that rather than when it's win or lose situation because it can when it comes to semi-finals nerves can take into control but you've got to be professional with it and i'm, I'm look i'm, I'm sure that that uh, christian wolf will make sure that they are back with a hundred percent attitude to make sure that they get it there they had that game won but even that even the coach would say to himself could i have done better could we have just put it under the jumper kept the three five up to five strides and then kicked downfield.
Keep them turning around. That's what they should have been doing with 10 minutes to go. As I said earlier, it's it doesn't matter how you win, but there are times when you've got to close the game down. And Christian Wolf and the, the likes of, of Roby, his experience, they won't let that happen again. Yeah, I suppose, you know, we've got very carried away about some of those young players, but there were some young players on the pitch, wasn't there, for Saints? Oh, sure. They'll have learnt a hell of a lot about that last five minutes. Absolutely. St. Helens have unearthed some, some star. I mean, we knew about Wellesby uh, from last year's yeah. grand final at Hull. Uh, now we know a little bit about Lewis Dodd. He's not, very a, good. not a bad player, is he? And now we know why Theo Farge is being allowed to go through the exit door at St. Helens. He's, a, he's an outstanding program, uh, uh, prospect, is Lewis Dodd. And as Steve, I will tell you that clubs like Saints and Wigan and Leeds, they have a production line of young players that come through all the time. And St. Helens do it so well. I mean, Mike Rush used to be head of youth development at St. Helens. He's now the chief executive. So it should come as no surprise to anyone that Saints have got a really good um, local development plan. And it, it keeps on producing players uh, year after year. The, the, the one thing I will say about the Catalan Dragons is that if, if they fail and they don't get to Old Trafford, they won't be the first. You know, they won't be the first league leaders to go to Old Trafford and, and lose the grand final. But I think now, Steve-O, that they can actually, in some ways, put their stars in cotton wool yeah. for a week or two. Two it, games left. Well, they know they've got that home semi-final, don't they? Yeah, exactly. They've got a, a semi-final home. They lose that, they're in a home knockout match anyway. So it's in their own hands. So the likes of, of Sam Tompkins, and you know, there is some doubt, uh, obviously, about Sammy Sony Lange because he, he got a, a hell of a clatter on, on Saturday. Um, Joel Tompkins as well. So we've got, we've got Huddersfield at home, and then they're away at Wigan. Huddersfield at home, where they can have the celebration, they lift the league yep. leaders' shield, um, then they can just take it easy and concentrate 100%. Don't you think on that first semi-final? Yeah, it's it's an option that they've got to look at. But also, uh, a lot of the players, they they like to have the continuity of, of just playing well. You know, they will be cock a hoop at the fact that they got away with it, with a one point. You know, uh, the Maloney drop goal, that will be living in the, their history for years and years and years to come. And what a way but, for him, Steve-O, to bounce out of, of, of uh, full-time rugby league. I know he's going to the, the, the minor competition in France, but Maloney... Hanging his he boots was, up at Old was Trafford superb. with a win. He was brilliant. And he comes off every week battered, bruised, bloodied. You know, he, he's a sensational I, I also player. think we saw the Man of Steel in that game. I'd be surprised Sam Tompkins is not Man of Steel this year. Well, it could be, couldn't it? It could be Sam, uh, Sam Tompkins for another year. It really could. He's had a, he's had a great season. Uh, but you, you've also got to look at the fact that uh, uh, Maloney probably had one of his better seasons. Uh, he, he's really turned them around. Because he can take control, and in doing so, he's allowed Tompkins to be more of a runner, to come come way out wide or whatever. You know, Tompkins sometimes can be just held back if he has the responsibility of taking charge of how they plan it in attack, in defence, etc. So I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, Tompkins will be very close to that uh, Man of Steel. I, uh, I I agree with you. I think that he's got to be in the running. Is that a is that a tremendous season? And I, I think I also know why he's had a tremendous season is the fact that all right, the World Cup was cancelled, but he didn't know that when he started this season. He knew yeah. the coach, he knew what he wanted, and the coach knew what he wanted from Sam Tompkins, and he's produced it. And let's hope that he can continue on that same enthusiasm and skill factor to be selected when we do get the World Cup next year. Let me put this to both of you. Catalans get to the final. I think a lot of neutrals after that performance at Magic will turn out and want to see the Catalans, whoever they're playing. And I think you're right. I think the Catalan Dragons probably at the moment, and certainly they were on Saturday apparently in Newcastle, they were being roared on by all the new Everyone over in the Saints in fans. The, yeah. In, in yeah. the stadium, apart yeah. from the Saints fans. Yeah. So they, they probably would be uh, everyone's second favourite team. They know, as Steve has already alluded to, what a boost it would be in the south of France if Catalan Dragons went home as the champions, never mind just league leaders, the champions on the morning of October the 10th. Um, 
and as I said earlier on, four minutes ago, I'm thinking, well, if, if Catalan get to the grand final, how on earth are they going to sell Old Trafford out? Now, Steve, you know, after that last four minutes and that one point drop goal, the drama of it, it's brilliant. People should be queuing up for the tickets yeah. for Old Trafford. Yeah, Steve. Should be a sellout now. I, th I think you're right, but uh, I've always been disappointed at the fact that uh, the grand final is not sold out two or three months before they play. Because it's a it's a great occasion, wonderful stadium, and we've got to make sure that that you know people perhaps encouraged to go. Maybe Super League, RFL, get the heads together and say, let's make it a bit cheaper to go to this year's grand final, knock a couple of quid off, or bring another child, no extra cost. We you know sometimes we it's been difficult in this pandemic. A lot of people have, have you know, haven't losing their jobs, etc. Shops and and restaurants closing down. You know, let's give something to those loyal fans. Let them, let's give them something. In a word, then. So can the Catalans win it? No. <laughs> Who's going to win it then? St. Helens. He, yeah. he said St. Helens all year. Yeah, look. I, he said St. Helens all year. That, that, that's typical that, of it. That five minutes ended up a massive wake-up call for St. Helens. Of course it? it did, and that's exactly what he said. But well, that's typical of him. You know, we've been talking Catalan up for the last ten minutes. Can they win it, Steve-O? No. Yeah. Typical I I miserable, get, typical I miserable don't. face on him. Excuse me, excuse <laughs> me. You two gentlemen have been bullying up Catalan, and they've done exceptionally well, and they deserve to win that trophy. <laughs> But, as I said it before, St. Tellens won't make that same mistake. They might not get they there. Hey, they might not all. get to Old Trafford. I think Saints will get there. No, but... they might not get there. Right. I was lucky enough to be there on Saturday, so I had a quick half a shandy after that game and sat down <laughs> and then watched this one. And this one was an absolute cracker as well. Leaming once more. There is Myler in the line. Reached Martin, looking for a way through. Strong, strong, strong. Oh, it's, it's very strong. I guess a disappointing season. Sneed with the kick through, and there's the bounce, and there's the try for Danny Houghton. Be regarded as as a success, and here comes Sneed with the kick to the corner, and that was dropped, and it tipped up by Carlos Trivadarve, and Mark Sneed at the double. Really good opportunity here for the Rhino Dwyer. Myler, they go to the right now with Cruz leaving. Options of Newman. Oh, yeah, wow. what a brilliant try! Will this result in more? Connor himself goes to the line! As he managed to get the ball down, Hull are celebrating. They think it's a try. So does Robert Hicks. Here is Briscoe, offloads to Newman. Newman for leaving! Myler, it's a great ball from Myler for Broadbent, and Broadbent finds a way through! Is this the moment? Is this the moment? Two minutes to go of Golden Point. Crews leaving! Crews leaving! Gee, what an unbelievable win! What a way to do it in Golden Point! Yeah, I think we are. Um... We made hard work of that one for ourselves. I mean, we were well off in some areas, but we you know, got a lot of pride in that team and they stuck together and we dug deep there. We got through a fair bit this year and that was a... It's good to come on the right side of them results and, um, like I say, we, we worked out for that. It could turn into a really important win as well in terms of the, the playoff picture and what the rest of your season looks like. Yeah, well, we, we labelled it a must win and we won, so... Uh, You've got quite a few young players in this squad. As one of the one of the older players, you must be really proud of how the young guys dug in today. Definitely, they've been they've been outstanding. They were uh, across the board, they were tremendous. Uh, big cutsy play from Cruz at the end to nail that, and uh, that was a good win. In terms of the confidence this gives you now to kick on to the end of the season. Definitely, yeah, we're in a good spot, and uh, we just got to keep building now. That was a massive win for Leeds and probably Hull can still qualify for playoffs in theory, but really up against it now. That was a huge win for Leeds. Massive, absolutely massive win for the Rhinos. Uh, 
you're right, Hull can qualify. Unlike play yes. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, the, 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 the smart money now is on Hull Kingston Rovers to to take uh, East Yorkshire into the uh, into the playoffs. You know, so I didn't say Humberside there because we've had many, many letters of complaint <laughs> when you say Anything Humberside. can happen. We know the top three. Wigan yeah, aren't do. guaranteed. I think Wigan will stay. So I reckon you're looking at Leeds, Castleford and Hull KR going for two spots. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And the the, the interesting feature about that, that game on uh, Saturday was that there were five attempted drop goals before we got the Cruz Leeming winner. I made a note of them. Uh, this morning, Sneed missed two for Hull, Leeming missed one, Martin missed one, and Myler missed one for Leeds before Leeming's 88th minute uh, one pointer that, that, that got them home. Uh, but uh, the, um, the fact that Leeds won will put a huge smile on, on Steve O's face. Yeah. Because, because everybody in rugby league knows, Steve O, you are a Leeds Rhino supporter. <laughs> Listen, I support rugby league, irrespective of that. And I know a lot of people sort of get on, get on to me and uh, criticise me, but. Uh, I, I just I see it as I see it, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm disappointed with Hull. They they're so up and down. They can't get themselves sorted out. That you know the forwards can't get it going, and maybe there's a few of the players getting a little bit too old. I think I'll be I think I'll be polite in regards to the black and whites. Maybe a couple should retire, and maybe they should start looking for bringing in a bit more youth. Because that is what's happened at Leeds. They've done that. And what made me so pleased was the fact that Brad Dwyer was outstanding. He was the man of the match by a country mile. He controlled everything, his runs from dummy half. And then, of course, it was another hooker that got the one point. Yeah, you'd be yeah. delighted about that. Um, you say that some of the whole players maybe should... Um, thinking about hanging up their boots. Eddie Jones on Sky Sports last week, he suggested that if Jake Connor got himself fit, he would fit in nicely to the England Rugby <laughs> yeah. Union setup. Yeah, and, and, and Brian Carney's response was perfect. A classic yeah. line, he said, and because they had a magician on picking Jenna's handbag, Jenna Brooks's handbag or pocket, and he said, well, we've had a magician on the programme Today, now we've got a comedian in Eddie Jones who thinks that <laughs> Jake Connor needs to get fit for rugby well, union. Eddie Jones, half his staffer from rugby league. Well, and, and <laughs> again, John Wilkin made a wonderful point. You know, the, the rugby union is coming and is taking some of our best talent, coaching wise, yeah. out of our game into rugby union. Please, God, they don't take Lee Breers because he's another one yeah. who will be on the uh, you know the wanted list at the end of this season. One more question before we move on. Look, we've had an imperfect season with matches off, etc., because of COVID. And but we've got some jeopardy now, Steve. Haven't we? We've got two really exciting weeks. I mean, Saturday night, the Catalan Dragons are going to get the League Leader Shield, well deserved. But we've got Hull KR versus Castleford. A week after, Leeds versus Hull KR as mm. well. We've got some proper jeopardy now for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I mean, this is the type of, the, you know, the end of the season where, where we should get some great games, uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, most of the players will not be 100%. It's, it's the same in any sport. When you get around to the, the quarterfinals or the, the, the playoff sort of situation, you know, there are so many players that will be jabbed and be strapped up, this, that and the other. So it, it equals itself out. But then it comes down to using your brains. This is when you've got to start understanding how to win a game of rugby league. It's the same with semi-finals, especially when it comes to the Challenge Cup. You don't win a Challenge Cup semi-final by playing outstanding open rugby league. You play tight, take your opportunities, tackle well, make sure that they don't get over that the defence. It's not pretty, but they don't care. It's the one way to make it to the final. Use your brains. Yeah. And Rovers and Castleford live on Sky Sports on Saturday night at, at half past seven. We've used the phrase already today, Mark, must win. It is a must win game for both of them because yeah. Castleford are still in the mix just yep. about. I'm slightly concerned for Cass, Stevo, because at the moment, McShane, Paul McShane, Greg Eden, Danny Richardson, Gareth O'Brien, all doubtful uh, for the weekend. Liam Watts still out uh, with a second of a two match ban. It's time for the likes of Peter Matautier, who stood up at the weekend, and Jordan Turner. That was the makeshift halfback partnership for Castleford. But with a full house, and I'm sure it will be, I'm sure the houseful notices will be up 
at whatever they call Craven Park these days, I'm sure that that will be a crucial factor for the Robins, don't you? I mean, they're mad up there, aren't they? We know that. They are crazy about the rugby league. Yeah, and, and I think we've got to give a lot of credit to Tony Smith as well. You know, they were, they were way down the, the league table last season. Um, and it's, he's recruited well. A lot of people had raised eyebrows and said, oh, why have they signed him? Why have they signed this sort of thing? But it's got them playing as a good team. And you've got to make out... Tony Smith has been a great coach throughout his entire career. He knows how to win games. And it's going to be difficult. But then again, you know, a lot of the players, Daryl Powell, they want to send, send him off. He'll be going over to Warrington next season. And they couldn't do it at Wembley. Can they do it? I don't think they can, especially when you've just listed a few of the injuries, especially McShane. McShane is uh, it is one of the biggest cogs in their machine, and I'm afraid they'll, they'll miss him. Let's hope he gets back. So we've just had a magic weekend. Two rounds, and then it's into the playoffs. The top six are in the playoffs, and we know the Catalans will have a home semi Final. We're going to get the league leader's shield this weekend as well. So congratulations to the Catalan Dragons. Right, before we finish with the fellas, I'm going to ask him a few questions about working together. <laughs> First of all, let's have try of the week. Hello and welcome to the Our League try of the week. I'm Dave Woods. Let's have a look at this week's contenders. Try one this week comes from the Magic Weekend, Leeds against Hull, and this is terrific from Leeds. Harry Newman with a lovely flick, and Cruz leaving on the wing to finish in the corner. Let's relish that flick again from Newman and that wonderful score. Try two, and very much a mercurial, magical moment from Sam Tompkins with a couple of left-footed steps and a weaving to the line for Catalan against St. Helens. Try three, and also from Catalan against St. Helens, part of the miracle of St. James's Park, the try that gave the Dragons real belief that they could still win this game. Artem Org with the break, Gil Dudson of all people in support to gallop in. Try four, if Tom Johnston is playing, it's highly likely he's going to get on this list. He seems to be on it so often, and this is very typical of the kind of tries he scores for Wakefield against Huddersfield. Plenty going on away from Magic Weekend this last weekend as well, including in the women's game. This is Fran Copley with wonderful pace down that left-hand side. Featherston against Bradford, a 100-yarder for Fran Copley. Super stuff. And finally, in the championship, Featherston against Halifax. And there ain't nothing like a Dane. Dane Chisholm scampering away for another big win for the Rovers. Get voting for your favourite this week. Try number five for me, but get voting. Right, we haven't got long left. A reminder, please vote for the Rob Burrow documentary at the National yes. Television Awards. Voting closes on Thursday. Vote for Rob Burrow's documentary. Um, Am I right in thinking, 1988, you were on Radio 2, is that yeah. the first time you worked together? Yes, yeah, I gave him a ring. The, the story was he was uh, sitting, supping a gin and tonic by his pool in Australia, and his wife said, there's a pommy on called Eddie. And I rang him up and I said, um, I'm coming down for the tour. Do you fancy working with me on the radio? And he, he decided he would. I think he was unemployed at the time, so he had no option. <laughs> anyway, he did that, and we made such an impact for the BBC on the... Well, he did, I didn't. The, he made such an impact on the BBC. When Sky came into being in 1990, we had another kangaroo tour up here that we were doing for BSB, and um, I saw his ugly mug looking out of the Hour League magazine at me, and I thought, oh, he's coming up with a tour. There's some, some Aussies coming up for the tour. We'll give him a ring and see if he, if he fancies doing the tour with us because we're really struggling at that stage for someone to sit alongside me in the commentary box. Again, he jumped at the opportunity. He came up for seven weeks and, dear God, he stayed for 26 years, didn't you? Eh? <laughs> I did, yeah. It's a, <laughs> uh, and I can honestly say that uh, I've had more than that one gin and tonic which, when I had my feet in the pool. <laughs> but, uh, listen, we had, we had a great time. 
uh, a wonderful man to work with. Uh, I enjoyed every single second. And you know the most amazing thing about it? We've only had one argument in 28 years. That's true. That's true. I watched. I watched. What was that the, about? Oh, well, I don't, I don't <laughs> tell you. Uh, we, we, we watched. I watched rather uh, over the weekend because I knew he was on uh, today with us. I watched the, the the 2016 grand final rerun when they had all the the stars of Sky Sports doing their doing their tributes to you and Murray and, and David Livingston off the golf. Uh, Ian Botham, David Lloyd from cricket, Jeff Stelling, you know, all the lads after the, after them. I had a tear in my eye, I really did. And then they showed all the nonsense we got up to uh, afterwards with the montage of the stuff that we did, the, the pantomimes we did at Wigan, you know, the, the birth of the game that we did at Wigan, at Wigan Pier. When he banged, it, the head-to-heads we did. At the, uh, do you know, people used to say to us, well, who writes the scripts for the... Well, he had the germ of the idea. There was never a script... We went, didn't we? We went into the studio. We hadn't a clue what we were doing. In fact, we went into the studio every week on match day and didn't have a clue what we were doing, didn't we? That's right. Yeah, it's uh, Eddie <laughs> used to say to me when uh, when the, we got the countdown, they'd say ten seconds to live, and I'd turn to him and I'd say, "What we're doing?" <laughs> and Eddie would just shake his Eddie would just shake his head. He said, uh, and then. They'd roll in, and we were doing it live. <laughs> no, it was head. it was a great pleasure because I always thought that it, if you have a if you have a script, it doesn't look natural, does it? No. You know, if you do it off the top of your head, and I did it off the top of my head that much, that's why I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the back end of that 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 grand final uh, program. He actually had the honour of walking because in 1973. You won the Harry Sunderland Award. Have we got the right year? Yeah, 73 when Dudes were about Leeds. That's in the right, he won a championship. Right? Yeah. A championship final. Yeah. He, won, he won the Man of the Match himself, the Harry Sunderland Award, and he marched out with the trophy and he presented it to, to Liam Farrell at the end of that. And, of course, we had that wonderful programme about him, Steve-O's grand finale. Uh, it was a pleasure, you know. I've, God, <laughs> God gave me a gift and there he is. There he is. Do you miss yeah, it? But, do, you, do you miss I, I it, Steve-O? Say- yeah, I must say that uh, my fond memories is the, is the fact that when a, an ostrich bit my right ear, <laughs> that was one of the funniest things I've, I've, I've ever explained, as far as Eddie was concerned. <laughs> and he laughed that much that when he reversed out of the place where we were doing the broadcast, he just picked up a brand new car and he rammed it into a huge big boulder. <laughs> I was bleeding out of my right ear and all he could do was laugh. And he said, he said to the man who was in charge of the safari park, he said, look, on a serious note, don't you think that we should go get a tetanus jab? <laughs> and the bloke looked at me and he said, I don't know which ostrich it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the ostrich is still alive to tell his tale as well. I'm sure he is. Now, that was a classic, oh. a classic. That opens up our Betfred sponsored podcast each and every week, and every time... Where do you get the podcast from? Normal places, etc. You everywhere. do it every week, you yeah, too. We do it every week. Uh, just look yeah. for Eddie and Steve out the podcast, you'll find us. Brilliant. And every week we play that clip of when he got his ear bitten off. And I, I can still see it to this day. I was, I was creased. I was doubled up with laughter. And I, I said, it's bleeding. He said, of course it's bleep, bleeding. The bleeping things just ripped me ear off. <laughs> <laughs> Steve-O, will you come on again? Yeah, look, any time. Yeah. I, I, I love rugby league. I, as I Clearly. keep saying, it's the greatest game of all. But I'd like to put out a plea to people who are supposedly running our game. Let's have a bit of change. Let, let's get some... Forget about self-interest. Let's sort it out. Other sports are going ahead of us quickly. We've got to make sure we're not left behind. We've got to start thinking now. Right, well, Steve-O we'll, has spoken. We'll get you on again, and then we'll expand on that as well. Steve-O, thanks very much for coming on. Eddie, thanks for coming Pleasure. on. And please vote for the Rob Burrow documentary. Absolutely. At the National Television Awards. See you next week. Enjoy the Betfred Super League, the Championship and League One, and the Women's Super League as well. Enjoy the action.